I'm filming in my kitchen today because this is where most of our health actually happens, right here with the food we choose. And yes, this really is my breakfast. Let me see if I can get it in the shot. Three eggs fried with a big knob of butter, four pieces of bacon, and a third cup of cottage cheese. Third to a half a cup of cottage cheese. And of course, my decaf tea. But here's the twist. I nail every single longevity biomarker we're about to talk about today. Let me show you what I mean. So let's walk through the five powerful longevity biomarkers that are already in your routine blood work. Plus one bonus test your doctor almost never orders unless you ask for it. And I'll give you the target ranges that most longevity experts actually want you to aim for because the normal on the lab reports usually just means average. And average today means inflamed, insulin resistant, and on the road to chronic disease. And we're not aiming for average. The first and most important biomarker is fasting insulin. This is the one almost no doctor orders unless you specifically request it. You'll see fasting glucose in that report, but insulin is the early warning system. Your insulin can be elevated for 10 to 15 years before your blood sugar ever moves. That's a decade of silent metabolic dysfunction. Now for longevity, we want fasting insulin under 10 and ideally in the three to six range. And here's a bonus. If you have your fasting glucose and your fasting insulin number, you can calculate your HOMA IR. It's a simple online calculator. And for metabolic health, you want that number under one, ideally between 0.5 and 1.0. The second biomarker is triglycerides. Most labs still say anything under 150 is normal, but that is way too generous. High triglycerides almost always point towards insulin resistance, high carb eating, or too many ultra processed foods. And when people go low carb or carnivore, triglycerides often drop dramatically. They did for me. For longevity, we want triglycerides under 100 and ideally under 70. The third biomarker is HDL, often called the good cholesterol. I want you to think of HDL as your cleanup crew, your internal housekeeping system for cholesterol transport. Labs will mark anything above 40 as fine, but longevity experts usually aim higher. For women, we want HDL over 60. For men, over 50. And ideally, you want to see it climb into the 70s or higher, especially if your triglycerides are low. Okay, let's talk about the fourth biomarker. That's your triglyceride to HDL ratio. This is one of the most powerful metabolic predictors we have, and hardly anyone talks about it. You take your triglycerides, divide by your HDL, and that's your ratio. So for example, triglycerides of 100 divided by a HDL level of 50 gives you a ratio of two. Now for longevity, we want that number under two ideally between 1.0 and 1.5. This ratio is far more predictive of heart health than total cholesterol will ever be. Now, the fifth biomarker is HSCRP. This is your inflammation marker. It stands for high sensitivity C reactive protein. Chronic inflammation accelerates aging your arteries, your brain, your joints, and your metabolism. Labs will often say anything under three is normal, but for longevity, we are aiming for under one and ideally under 0.5 or lower. 
assuming you aren't sick the day you get your blood drawn. Now, take a breath with me. I know that was a lot of numbers, but once you understand these five biomarkers, you're no longer guessing about your health. You can actually measure how well you're aging on the inside. And now it's time for the bonus biomarker. This one doesn't move quickly, but it tells you a lot about how your body has been handling sugar over time. It's your HbA1c. I'll put, write it out here. Your three month average blood sugar. Doctors don't worry until your A1c hits 5.7, which is the cutoff for prediabetes. But if we're talking about aging well, that's too high. For longevity, you wanna aim for below 5.4, and ideally in that 5.0 to 5.2 range without frequent lows. Remember, HbA1c is a lagging marker. It rises late. That's why we always look at it alongside fasting insulin and that triglyceride to HDL picture. So what do we do with all of this? First, remember this is education, not medical advice. But you absolutely can say, at my next visit, I'd like my fasting insulin, triglycerides, HDL, HSCRP, and my HbA1c, and a printed copy of my labs. Second, don't panic if your numbers aren't where you want them. They're a starting line. And when you move towards whole foods, you prioritize protein, lower carbs, control your sugar, reduce seed oils, and processed foods. These biomarkers almost always improve. Longevity isn't about guessing. It's about paying attention to the signal your body is giving you long before symptoms ever appear. And once you understand these six markers, you have a roadmap for aging well today, not 10 years from now when disease finally shows up. So if you'd like me to create a simple one-page cheat sheet with these biomarkers and their optimal ranges so you can track them over time, let me know in the comments. I'd be happy to make it for you and post it on my fourth wall as another resource for you. This is Dr. Rose. I'll see you tomorrow in the next Daily Spoonful.